Hey guys, welcome back to another Home Assistant Guide video. Today we're going to be looking at ESP Home, how to install it, how to configure it, and how to build out sensors really quickly and efficiently and integrate them straight into Home Assistant. I'll show you how ESP Home can drastically cut down the amount of hours you need to spend getting your custom sensors into Home Assistant. It really does make it so easy. So what is ESP Home? ESP Home is a simple yet powerful system that allows you to control your ESP8266 or ESP32 boards using YAML configuration files that will integrate and communicate with Home Assistant in literally just a few clicks. The configuration files allow you to quickly and easily build out custom sensors and devices and ESP Home will automatically generate firmware for your device meaning no coding experience is required. If you're familiar with Tasmota, ESP Home is a really similar concept. It really is an amazing project and the integration with Home Assistant is a real game changer. So how does it work? There are currently two main methods of installing ESP Home. The quickest and easiest is through the Home Assistant add-on. The second way is to install through Python using pip. We're going to be covering the Home Assistant add-on method in this video. However, if you want to see the Python install, then be sure to let me know down below. Once ESP Home is installed, you simply create your configuration files that detail things like the type of board you're using, the type of sensor, the pin number, etc. And from there, ESP Home will automatically generate the firmware required, which you then upload to your device. ESP Home can upload new firmware through the USB port or over Wi-Fi, which is called over-the-air updates. In order for over-the-air updates to work, you must have an initial firmware on your device first. I honestly cannot explain how quick it can be to build out and integrate new devices with Home Assistant using ESP Home. What would have previously been a few hours of coding and troubleshooting to get a new sensor to work can now automatically be done in just a few minutes. It really is that amazing. What's also really impressive is the reaction time. Sometimes when using Tasmota in the past, I often noticed a few hundred millisecond delay between clicking a button in Home Assistant or a physical light button before the action actually happened. This might not sound like much at all, but it was definitely noticeable to me, especially when using automatic lights. ESP Home completely eliminates this delay for me to the point where I actually think it's triggered before I've even pressed it, like it knew what was coming. Hopefully you're all now as excited about ESP Home as I am. Let's move over to the installation and configuration. So as mentioned, ESP Home is incredibly easy to install. Let's jump into Home Assistant and we will install it from the add-ons menu. So from your Home Assistant dashboard, you're gonna to want to head down to the supervisor menu. And then from there, head on to the add-on store and find the ESP Home add-on within the um, community add-on section. Click on ESP Home and then simply click on install in order to install it. Okay, so ESP Home has just finished installing and the first thing you'll want to do is head over and you can enable the watchdog um, slider, enable the show in sidebar slider, which will reload the page and you'll notice that we now have an ESP Home option over on the left-hand side. And then finally, we will want to click the start button. Once that finish is starting, you then want to click on the ESP Home add-on on the left-hand side, and you'll notice a new window opens up in the middle of Home Assistant. On the right-hand side, you can tell it, you can see it's saying that we don't have any nodes set up, which is obvious because we just installed it. So if we go ahead and click the pink plus button to add our first node, this will open up the wizard menu, which will then take you through and get you to enter your Wi-Fi details, the name of the node, and um, the over the air updates password. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this in. I'm gonna call this one office temperature, which will become apparent later on. But for now, just fill that in, uh, office underscore temperature. There are certain characters that you cannot use in the name. It tells you um, just up here. So just make sure to start st stick to that naming scheme. Press continue. Um, next, it asks us what type of board we are using. So I'm actually using a Wemos D1 Mini, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that from the list. But you can see the wide range of boards that are supported here. So I go ahead and select Wemos D1 Mini, press continue, and the next thing asks is your Wi-Fi details. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in my Wi-Fi details. And password. Finally, there is the over the air updates password. So this password actually prevents 
anyone just being able to over there update your device because that wouldn't be very secure. So this just sets a password to make sure that nobody can update it without permission. So we'll set that too. And all of these parameters are changeable, so don't worry if you get them wrong, we can change them in the next step. Finally, hit submit. And you will notice that there is now an entry um, right in the middle of our screen showing office temperature. In the, right, in the top right hand side, you'll see it's asking us to select an update port. You'll need to connect your device over USB in order to upload an initial flash and then we can use the over the air updates after that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the drop down and select USB serial from the list. Finally, we can go ahead and click edit on the config file. What's gonna happen is it's gonna show a 404 not found page. That's normal, so just close that, click on your dashboard or another panel, click back to ESP Home, and finally click Edit again. This will show the config. Okay, so in the YAML config, you can see that it's pretty simple, um, pretty bare bones, and it should be pretty self-explanatory, but let's run through. So I do see a lot of complaints online from people who say that the YAML configurations are too confusing, too complex, but they really aren't. They really are incredibly simple. So the most important thing to remember about YAML is to space your lines correctly. So you'll notice in the YAML config, we have these kind of blocks that define the um, config that we want to use. So we have the ESP home block, the Wi-Fi block, the captive portal block, logger, API and OTA. So these tell ESP Home which components we want to use and the options for each of those components. So let's take a look at the top block. So the top block is the ESP Home block. So this block tells ESP Home the name of the board, what type of platform it is, so ESP8266 or ESP32, and what type of board we are using. So pretty self-explanatory there. The next block is the Wi-Fi block. So we tell ESP Home to enable the Wi-Fi component we give it the SSID, the password, and finally the fallback AP. So this is useful if you incorrectly enter your Wi-Fi details or your Wi-Fi becomes unavailable. ESP Home will automatically create a fallback access point on your device that you can automatically connect to to recover it. The captive portal block enables a captive portal if the fallback hotspot is enabled. Then we move on to the logger block. This tells ESP Home to enable verbose logging to the console, which we'll see in a minute. Finally, we have the API component. This is actually how ESP Home communicates with your devices through using this API, and so you must set the password to be secure. Finally, we have the OTA block, which enables over-the-air updates. If you don't have the OTA block, then over-the-air updates will not work. So that is a super basic configuration file for our node. So what we'll do is we'll save this configuration file and upload it to our Wemos. ESP Home will automatically generate a firmware based on this configuration and then upload it over the USB port. This configuration file is pretty useless in its current form because we haven't added any sensors or told ESP Home to do anything special. But it does give us an initial config and then from there we can then do our over the air updates. So let's go ahead and save and upload that now. So if we just hit the save button, although we haven't changed anything, and then from there we can press the upload button. So ESP Home is now taking our configuration file and compiling a firmware based on that config. The first time you compile the config takes a little bit longer as it downloads the necessary files. However, the next time you compile, it should be a lot faster. Okay, so ESP Home has now finished compiling and you can see it's now uploading to our device over USB, which is listed here and then it gives you the progress of the flash down below. So we just wait for that to finish. And now we are directly connected to the console of our device. This actually outputs logs to the console and makes it easy to troubleshoot and see what's going on. You can see here that it's going through and scanning for Wi-Fi networks and it's failing because obviously I, I entered incorrect Wi-Fi details. So you can see it's just going through and saying no matching network found. You can see now that after a while it goes back to the fallback access point. So now we've uploaded an initial firmware to our Wemos, let's actually look at a practical example and show you just how easy it is to add a sensor to your device. ESP Home has tons of compatible sensors and devices that you can find on their website. So I've got here a Dallas DS18B20 temperature sensor, which I'm gonna connect up to the Wemos D1 Mini and I'll show you just how easy it is to add this to ESP Home and integrate it straight into Home Assistant. So let me connect that up and then we'll come back. 
So you can see here I've plugged in my temperature sensor straight to my Wemos D1 Mini. So let's plug that back in and then we can create a config for it. So inside the config file, we just need to go down a couple of lines and then we're gonna add a block called Dallas because this is a Dallas temperature sensor. First thing we need to do is grab the unique address programmed into my temperature sensor. To do that, we just add the Dallas block. So the only thing we need to tell ESP Home is the pin number that our sensor is connected to. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter pin D4, D4. And you can notice how I indented twice at the start to indicate that pin belongs to Dallas. If we go ahead and save that, and then we can upload straight to our device. And we'll just wait for this firmware to compile and then upload to our Waymos. I'm actually just gonna quick make a quick edit. I'm gonna fill in the Wi-Fi details correctly. Otherwise it just keeps complaining about the network. This time we should notice a little bit of difference in the output of the console when it starts up. So you can see there the line that says setting up Dallas component, that's good. It joins to the Wi-Fi. And then from there, you can see this blue line now shows the correct address of our temperature sensor. So what I'm gonna do is highlight that and copy it so that we can use it in the next step. So you can see here that it's also printing out information about the Wi-Fi, IP address, host name, et cetera, et cetera, which is useful for troubleshooting. So what I'm gonna do is now edit the config. So back in the configuration file, we just need to tell ESP Home that we have a new sensor and then we add the address of our Dallas. So in a new block, just type sensor, sensor. And from there, we tell it what platform. So we enter platform, Dallas. And you can see here that this, there's a red cross on the left-hand side. It'll actually tell you the issue that's wrong. So you can see here, it's actually expecting a name, which is fine. So I go ahead here and enter name, and I'm gonna give my sensor a name. So this is office temperature and you can see it's still complaining if we hover over it and it's because it's expecting an address which I'll enter now so address and we just paste in the address that we just copied and pasted from the console and you can see it's now happy there's no um, red cross here that I've indented my configuration file as required but just make sure to indent your configuration file correctly and also pay attention to the crosses if we save this and now upload. Okay, so now that we are starting up again, you can see here that it's actually outputting our temperature already. So office temperature 19.4. We'll just wait for the initial output to go past and then we should start getting some temperatures. Okay, so we've got another temperature outputted to the screen. You can, if we look at the timestamp, it's 11.35.28. If we look at the original timestamp, it's 11.34.30, so 60 seconds in between, pretty much. This is because the default update interval is actually 60 seconds for this component. We can change that if we just go back into the config, click edit, and then under pin, we want to do update interval, and we can specify a time period. So maybe I want every five seconds. If we save that, now upload. So this time we'll wait for all the um, Wi-Fi details to be printed out and then we should be left with our temperature. So there's our first temperature came up and if we wait another five seconds, we've got another temperature, we'll wait another five seconds and we have another temperature. So you can see just how easy it is to make changes to your sensor. So that is a really quick example of how to create a sensor with ESP Home. So how do we add it into Home Assistant? That's actually the other really cool component of ESP Home. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this for now. You can see that it's saying our device is online, which is cool. Next, you want to head over to configuration and then from there, click on integrations. You can see that Home Assistant has already discovered our office temperature device, which is excellent. We could just click configure here and it would set it up for us, but I'll show you how to add it manually just in case your discovery doesn't work. Click on the plus button in the bottom right hand corner and then from here, we're gonna type ESP Home, click on the ESP Home integration, and from there, we then want to enter our host name or IP address of our device. So it was office temperature.local, hit submit. 
ESP Home will automatically connect and then we enter the password that we defined in the API section of our configuration file. Go ahead and enter that, click submit. Home Assistant then tells us it was successful. You can define an area of where it's stored. I'm gonna just leave that for now and click finish. You can see it's then automatically added to our integrations. If we head back to the overview tab to go back to our dashboard, click on the three dots in the right hand side, click configure UI, click take control, hit the plus button, and then we can easily show our device on the dashboard. So I'm just gonna choose an entity card, enter office temperature. I only really have one device on this instance of Home Assistant, and you can see it's automatically selected office temperature, which is cool. So we click that. You can fill in these other details if you wish, but you don't need to. I'm gonna click save, and there it is. It's added to our dashboard. And you can see it's all working in real time. If I go ahead and hold my fingers over the sensor, you can see it immediately starts to climb. So there we go, all working. We can also use the graph card to show the history of the temperature. So go ahead and click the plus button again and click on history graph. We can then fill in the details again. So I'm gonna hit office temperature, temperature. We can change the hours to show. So maybe I want the last one hour because our device hasn't been on that long. So, and then we just go ahead and click save. And then that adds a graph to our dashboard. And there are loads of official and community made cards that you can use to change the way your information is displayed. I hope that shows you just how easy it is to build out sensors and devices using ESP Home. You can head to the ESP Home website and check out all the compatible sensors and devices and see how to use them. And they give you examples for every sensor and device. You can also create your own if you're feeling adventurous. So there we go guys, that is a brief overview on how to install and configure ESP Home. The ESP Home is genuinely one of my favourite projects for Home Assistant as I'm sure it is for many others. I try to use ESP Home for as many of my custom sensors and devices as possible. There really is no downside to it. Whenever I'm looking to build out a new sensor or device, I always head to the ESP Home project to see if it's compatible. The amount of time and work it saves is really next level. Thank you all again for all the amazing support. It really does mean a lot. I know we've been covering a lot of software tutorials recently, but I will have some hardware stuff coming up soon, as well as some other projects, so stay tuned for that. Make sure to hit the like button and get subscribed, and thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.